So Hold I guess on. we'll start. I'm gonna take stuff out of my pocket yeah, yeah, so yeah. it doesn't look pockety. <laughs> no, I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't lose that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Everything you can lose, yeah. not a passport here. <laughs> I'm Narav, I'm the founder and CEO of Framework. We build, of course, repairable, upgradable consumer electronics products. Uh, I'm Yuling, I'm the uh, founder of Deep Computing and specialize in making uh, end user mass produced products using RISC-V chipsets. And before Framework, I was at Oculus. I built the hardware team there and built a bunch of very interesting and complicated VR headsets that were unfortunately not repairable at all, <laughs> not upgradable, not repairable. Um, so I'm repenting a little bit with Framework. Oh, before Framework, I, I, I did a startup in software. It's compiler related uh, 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 tools to find out the back doors of all the softwares. I'm security hackers, so, and-, and <laughs> Don't get on this guy's bad side. And, and, and COVID kill us. <laughs> Oh yeah. So obviously in, in Oculus, it was kind of a similar di dynamic to Framework actually, where we were a small team, all heading in the same direction, all passionate about the same thing, moving like really, really fast, iterating really, really fast. And then we got acquired two years in, which, which is good obviously in many ways. We had like suddenly unlimited resourcing to go and do whatever we wanted to do in VR. But there's also a curse that comes along with resourcing, <laughs> which is that the more people you have, and to some extent, the more money you have, the more you slow down, and so we lost that kind of aligned vision. We lost the iteration speed. We lost like the velocity that we actually needed. And so five years into, or actually, I, well, so we had, obviously as we got acquired, we had like a, a golden handcuff period of five years, but you know, two and a half years into that five years, I was like, I've got to get out of here. This is, this is not the right way to build products. Uh, and so I spent basically the last two and a half years with like a little process running in the back of my head of what am I going to build, you know, obviously in hardware and thinking about like, okay, what's the right way to build a hardware company? And so like as the, you know, the, the calendar days ticked away to get to the end of that five years, I just slowly matured the, basically the concept of what framework became. COVID is makes uh, very hard for B2B business in China because it's blocked and randomly locked down. Um, I couldn't get um, excavated by my former startup to go anywhere. And then the funding is drying up and then the business is not taking off. And then uh, one day I fell up and wrote to the boss that I'm gonna close them, I'm gonna close the company and fold it. And I move back to London. I can't take the random lockdowns. And then when one door is closed and another door is open and and suddenly I got an email of uh, uh, Alibaba, uh, T-Head, and Miss Five Foundation say, you know, you got nothing better to do, you're in Shenzhen, and there's no lockdown in Shenzhen, uh, but you locked down in anywhere else in the world, uh, the China, and why not you help me to find out whether we can make the laptop? So that is say, I'm a software guy, I have no, I no idea how hard to make a laptop. Coolest. Okay, then I do. I did manage to find my friends and friends, friends, and get 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 into a um, uh, manufacturer. He's one of the biggest uh, ODM for Intel. So and and I I, I because our compiler is based on MIPS, and 20, 30 years old compiler. So and I can easily make it into a RISC-V compiler and the whole ecosystem, I have my OS, I have my compiler, I can do things specialized for RISC-V, and that's why not? I make a hardware, because nobody make it, and then I, I can vertically, I try to make an, an Apple, right? That's my dream, so I started deep, com deep computing. That's all. <laughs> it's a bold vision. Uh, only enough, during the COVID, I will never make my own laptop <laughs> on RISC-V, and I won't, I don't, enjoy the torture of making the laptops and sleeping in the factory, fighting for capacity of the manufacturing. Yeah. I don't enjoy it. Right, right. Yeah, it was really, we're, we found each other on Twitter, right? <laughs> as, as people do. Who tweeted who first? I, it's me. It's uh, um, uh, last year after the Vispy Summit in 2023, and Robert uh, from DigiKey come over, stupid union. You should not make your own <laughs> laptops. I say, what the hell? Yeah, and then it's very honest, this guy. 
and then you should make framework. And then I say, what is framework? It's a build. It's a building. Uh, it's a builder. It's a you know uh, building company, whatever. And then and then robot come along and show me, hey, you should make this motherboard on RISC V. And then he show me, and then I, I, I feel shock. And then I decided just go ahead and just do it. And then I contacted enough and 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 on Twitter and then I got, I got super quick response. Yeah, yeah, because we were wait I was waiting for somebody to show up with <laughs> like, hey, I want to make a main board. Um, actually like we, we get that pretty regularly. Actually, people will, like either message us on Twitter or like send an email or something saying, Hey, I want to make this thing, I want to make this thing. And usually it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> so like when you turned around a few weeks basically like I don't know, it was like a month later, like, oh, we got the schematic ready. I was like, oh, okay, this guy's serious. Well, I think it was, it was pretty clear, obviously, I knew that you were ready to build hardware. You're already building hardware. So that was, that was like one good indicator that like, okay, this is, this is a company that like is not just saying they want to build hardware. They've already built hardware. And like you said, you know how painful it is to build hardware. So if you're like, hey, this is a better way to build hardware if we just work together. I agree, obviously. Like, yeah, like that is a way easier way. Um, but still, even with that, like showing up that quickly with a schematic was was a surprise. When you were five years old, your very first job was it to be a computer builder? No. What no. was it? You knew what no. you wanted to be? No. Astronaut. No. Athlete. No. I, I just want to be another unalone un money doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Typical so Chinese. So you've done the opposite of that. You, you just made a, a technology startup building uh, risk five. <laughs> yeah. And and I I never imagined myself making a laptop. When I was in Nokia, when Nokia started ODM um, uh, making laptop, I was screaming into the management, you're insane, this is marginless PC. With no volume, you're just losing money. Why not it's the focus <laughs> on making, making the damn phone, right? That, that's my, and I never imagined myself making laptop. That, that's, that. And then, you know, life come along, um, you're destined to do something that you never wanted to do. <laughs> it's a gift. Uh, well, I would say my, my goal from the beginning was not um, uh, have a lot of money without needing to work. <laughs> like for me, it is about the engineering. It's about building stuff. Um, so yeah, obviously since I was a kid, like tearing computers apart, rebuilding computers, you know, building my own desktops, just playing around with electronics. So it was like a pretty clear path from can you know tearing stuff apart to designing things that are designed to be torn apart? Now my favorite part of my job is crazy. It's about losing money. <laughs> That's your favorite and then, part. <laughs> and then the other favorite uh, part is that is whatever I do on risk five, I'm the world number one. That's true. The world yeah, first. yeah you're, you're the energy. You're one of the main sources of energy behind <laughs> that because is, of stuff. Oh, the journey is amazing. Favorite part? I would say actually building the team is 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 my favorite part. Uh, basically, like you know, obviously like one person at a time, hand selecting this like you know super team of people who are insanely good in in each different area that we bring people in for. Uh, and it's fun. You start from like you know yourself basically when you're starting a company, and then one at a time you look at it in the world and you look at your network of people and you look at people just broadly out there, and literally just like convince the best people one at a time to join you on your mission. And it's it's it never stops being fun. Yeah, there's a lot of expected challenges. I would say uh, we made a lot a lot of mistakes in Oculus, like every possible type of mistake. And so with framework, I got to not make the same mistakes and make new mistakes, but mostly the mistakes have been a lot smaller and easier to recover from than the, than the bigger Oculus mistakes that we made. Oh, mistakes. <laughs> every day, every minute. It's this stuff. You know, the, I think the difference between a form and big company and stuff is all about mistakes. So how quick you go around the mistake. So not us. I did the first laptop, I did the second one, I do faster, I do better, but still a mistake. So go on to framework, it's, it's designated better approach for risk five, for scaling, for, for tap into different community and, and at the right time. And then uh, unavoidable mistakes is every day for staff. And we, we just had to enjoy it and I, I had to quote um, a media founders that, and 
every day I'm not happy. <laughs> and it's mm, if you decided to do star up to the great thing in the world, we got to suffer. And then and then the mistake is part of it. Yeah, every mistake that doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So, absolutely. So as founders who are on a new age of tech, who are trying to change the culture and the movement, how do you know that you're moving in the right direction? And there's this idea of like product zeitgeist fit, fit a little bit. Like, and you could see that with like, you know, Linux from early 90s, like, you know, dropping on a mailing list, like massive explosion, or, you know, or similarly for, you know, Ubuntu or for Canonical. Um, but we can feel that right now in certain you ways. Really like, you really feel it. feel that now. right now with Risk V. Like, yes, oh, yeah, yeah, like there's, a, there's like an opening for this thing to exist. And that's why it's like there's so much energy and excitement yes, around sir. it. What drives you guys to like show up to work every day and continue on your projects despite all of the hardships you face? It's the suffering. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be addicted to suffering yeah. to found a startup. I, I, I would think that, right? Um, the, 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 the other thing is that doing the startup is not for a local, ordinary people to do it. It's for all those extra extraordinary <laughs> people to do it because <laughs> and, and those are crazy people that so addict to solving the problem and addict to being suffer and and you know, we, we, we every day we worry about money every day we worry about earning money every day that I worry about problem every day worry the solution never come back but you will find that life is just and making you uh, close one door, open one door. And, and the time will help you to solve all the problem as long as you want it to. Yeah, I think that's right. It's basically you're seeing a future that you want to manifest and you know that you can't manifest that future unless you put in the hard work day to day and continue to navigate, solve problems as they come up. Uh, and that thing basically that, that future is not going to exist unless you like push and push and push to make it exist. My 20 vision is to make framework to be successful. Oh, there we go. <laughs> hey, how about I'll make deep, we'll make deep computing successful. That's <laughs> now we were, we actually been talking a lot about this a lot at the um, at the Ubuntu summit. This idea of 20 year visions of uh, what it looks like to be in a world where the default computing architecture, default computing norm that we're all in is a stack that's like this rich ecosystem of RISC-V, ISA, through a rich ecosystem of SOC vendors, through a rich ecosystem of hardware manufacturers, all ideally with interoperable hardware like we're building with, uh, with framework, with similarly open software on top of it. Like that's a plausible world that we can actually create. Do you have any advice for the next generation of startup founders? Don't give up. <laughs> That's the key. And just try. It's sometimes life gives you opportunity. Just go and do it. Don't give up. Yeah, and it, and it is the don't give up because it's not you know it's not that we're like smarter or like um, you know more capable than other people. It's not you know, the startup founders who like make progress and like uh, push things forward to the ones who don't give up basically it's like it's the the persistence and the resilience that matters more than like you know brain power or, or connections or anything else and the other thing is that and take on the trend that you believe in yeah yeah pick something you're passionate about definitely any last words for our YouTube audience and Wait for our mesh production or for risk five <laughs> main ball uh, for, in, uh, for framework in November. Yeah, if you're a developer and are willing to be an early adopter of a new technology. <laughs>